Okay. So as you guys know, this is a, a new graphical user interface of Midas Serial 2013, which is different from 2012, and it become more intuitive and easier to do the modeling. So today we're going to do the step by step uh, modeling. Uh, I do the modeling, try to do it slowly. Uh, then if you are uh, following me on your computer, so you can um, do it step by step and learn more. Okay. Okay. So uh, the first thing we um, we start doing will be creating the uh, nodes and um, generating the geometry. So the first thing for the node will be, as I said, it's going to be a seventy meter bridge. So what I do, I just create node and say. First node will be here, and then 14 segments, and each segment will be 5 meter in the x direction, and apply. So these nodes are created. Now I need to create the element. So on the same tab, node and element, I can go to create element, and then click here, node connectivity. Ensure that the uh, intersect node and element are checked. Actually, here we need just a node, which means whenever the, this um, element is intersecting with node, it will be divided into, uh, you know, two pieces. So I select this node and the last node, and you see automatically uh, all the elements are created from 1 to 14. Okay. So my beam is created, but um, we don't have any material or section assigned to the sec to these um, elements. So what I do, I need to define the material property and also I need to define the section properties. So for that reason, we go to the property tab, material properties. All right, we have two two material here. One will be the concrete for the uh, main girder and the pier, and also we need the we need to define the um, steel material for the pre-stressing tendon. So let's see how the material is defined. So select the material tab, add, and as you see, you can select the steel, concrete, steering force concrete, or user-defined material. First, let's define the concrete. Selecting the concrete, you can select the standard that you want to select, uh, select from. So I uh, stick with the ASTM uh, for reinforced concrete and selecting the grade 6000 and uh, you see that the material property or mechanical property of that material shows up here. Alright, this will be the first one. Let's define the, um, the material for the tendon as well. So we can select the steel and then select it from the database, let's say 270 um, uh, normal type of, uh, type of steel, or let me just show you how the user defined works. So I select the user defined and this dialog box uh, is open for me, so I can just enter the values that I want. For the modulus of elasticity, I just enter 2, 8 uh, kilonewton per square meter. And then Poisson Ratio, I enter 0 0.2. Thermal coefficient, we don't um, care about it now. And I keep the self-weight or the weight density as 0. But you can enter any value that you want. Uh, but while we define this um, uh, weight density, when we're activating the, okay, so we call it pre-stressing or tendon. And OK. So now we have two material properties. Uh, we can switch to the section tab. And now we can define the sections. If you are not on this dialog box and you want to select a section, you can just come to, come to the properties and then section property. Click on that. It brings you to the same dialog box. All right. So let's say add. It opens on my other screen.
Okay, so um, as you see for the sections, we have user defined, which you can select any of these, um, you know, standard sh type of shapes. You can go with the values, you can go with the steel reinforced concrete, uh, combined sections, steel reinforced concrete, uh, sorry, uh, PSC sections, tapered or composite. So what we need to do, we need to define the uh, PSC section, which here is the um, guide diagram. Based on that, you can select um, any type of section that you want. If you want a single cell, so you can select this one, single cell or two cells, uh, three cells, n cells or more than uh, three cells, or if you want the eye shapes or you know, any of these shapes, or if you have a general section, you can also get it from the um, section property calculator. But now we just select a single um, cell. As I say, we're going to just keep it very simple, straightforward, um, because we need to just learn how to do the modeling. That's all. So based on this di um, diagram, I need to have the JI4. I need to have JO2, uh, JI2, and JI3. All right, I need these. Uh, these are the joints, uh, which you can see them in a red. And if you want to have like a different slopes on different edges, you have to check them on. And uh, by selecting each one different, um, you know, window open for you, and then you can enter the dimensions. Otherwise, it remains at a zero. All right, so I start entering these values. By the way, we select only single cell. So these are the outer dimensions. I enter, I ensure that the dim my uh, dimensions are in a kilonewton and meter. And the 0 0.2, HO2 will be 0 0.35, 0, HO3 2.45, 2.75, 1, 0 0.75, and finally 2.8. So these are the outer dimensions. And as you see, as we enter in these values, the, um, the I mean, the section starts to uh, get formed, but uh, it's not mature yet. So let's enter the internal dimensions also to get the nicer shape. HI2 will be 0, and then 2, and then 0 0.54 and 0 0.2, 0, and 0 0.25. All right, he's getting the outer shape correctly, 2.9 and 1 1.2, 2.9, 2.4445. And finally, 1.45. Okay, so um, this is correct. Um, then we have options for the shear check and web thickness for um, design. So we have to uh, either enter the uh, thickness that we have here, or just say that automatic, and the software automatically consider those. So if you don't know what to enter, just uh, we can select the automatic. All right, but it will be the minimum values that we got here and consider shear deformation and uh, just say display um, centroid. Uh, anytime that you're doing the, you're modeling the uh, PSC sections or in the general section, uh, you can just click on the display centroid. If it show you all the, you know, four points, which generally software provides the stresses at these four points, you can also add more, but um, originally it shows just in these points. Uh, if you see them uh, showing up, it means that the section is created correctly and all the dimensions are correct. But if you are not seeing these three lines for Z1, Z2, and Z3, uh, which are the, uh, you know, um, stress checks for these corners and also the centroid, if you are not seeing them, it means that the section is not, the dimensions are not correct and you have to reconsider them. And uh, then you can, um, you know, uh, say apply. Because if you say apply, it doesn't uh, go through. All right, let's give the name as a box section. And uh, you can see also the show calculated results. You can see the sectional properties here. 
one by one. All right, so everything is done, and uh, the only the one more thing that I need to do is to switch the I mean use the offset option in way to as you see here. Let me just show you. This is the centroid of the section, okay? But we don't want to in the modeling. We don't want to keep it here. We want to move it back in the top of the um, top of the girder. So what I do top of the box. So what I do, I can just use the offset, select the center top, and say OK, and display option. As you see, the new square, um, I mean red square um, is showing up here. It means that uh, the centroid is moved up there. Center of the section is remains still here, but the centroid is moving up there, and the software connects these two with a rigid link. I say OK. And anytime that uh, you click on that, you will see the small um, shape of this section here. For example, if you have 10 section and you forgot what was the name, you can just simply click on them and you see the diagram here and uh, you understand that which section is related to which element. All right, so uh, we are done with that. And as you see, automatically the software applied this section to um, um, our girders. Uh, our elements that our beams that we defined and I think they yes you see that the material is also assigned under the tree menu um, as you uh, I'm not sure you can see it or not because it's pretty small the tendon uh, material property is still blue but the uh, grid C uh, I mean the concrete grid 6000 is a uh, red uh, sorry black so whenever it's black it means it's it is assigned to at least one element, but when it's blue, it means it's defined, but is not assigned to any sections or elements. So that's the way to recognize this um, if you are um, uh, assigned it to any elements or not. All right, let's move on. I have one more section to define, and that will be the the pier. So let's quickly do that too. Section property. This time I just use a user defined and uh, select a solid round and select a user, call it peer. And then the dimension of that will be 3 meter. All right. Yeah. Done. So uh, now we have to define this uh, peer bottom, uh, down here, right? But what happens, we have only one node in top of the girder. If I switch it and we turn it off, you see that there is one, only one node here. And if I model the uh, pier right here uh, in the middle of this section, it will be going inside this section, which is not correct. Let me just show you. Let me just model it and then show it to you. Okay. Okay, select this element and then go into element. Let me just show it from here. Element and extrude element. So extrude element is actually you can extrude um, a node and create a line element. Select a material as this and then the section will be section 2. Uh, going downward in the Z direction, negative 10, uh, one time and apply. So uh, let's see how the shape look like. So that's uh, how it looks like. But um, if I let me turn off some points, uh, you can enact deactivate certain part of the uh, structure. Let's say deactivate. And uh, you see that uh, this is what I modeled. But this is not correct because uh, we don't, I mean, the pier don't go inside the uh, pier, so what ha uh, inside the girder. So what we have to do, we have to move it downward. So I just select this element, go into the properties, uh, notes, an element, and then uh, we have to just move it or translate. Okay, translate going to the Z direction, negative 3 and element is selected and apply. 
So what I do, I have to use select move instead of copy because copy just create one additional one for me. All right, move. All right, uh, now this look correct. Uh, we moved it downward and uh, here is the girder, here is the uh, uh, pier. But if I turn it off, you see that there is no connection between the pier and the, uh, the box. So somehow we have to connect them. To connect these two, we are using a, uh, a elastic link of a rigid type. So for that reason, I need to go to boundary and elastic link. And then under the type, you can select the rigid type. Okay, so the rigid type will be completely fixing these two points and any load, trans, uh, load uh, will be translated, uh, transferred from one to another. Two nodes from here to here and it's done. All right, now the uh, top and bottom of the girder are connected and we ensure that they are behaving as they are supposed to. All right, so now we can activate the entire the structure you remember we deactivate them using this option. Now we can click on this, activate all, and the entire the section comes back. Uh, we have one more thing to do is uh, uh, I want to apply the supports down here because I uh, um, assume that this is the uh, abutment and then the bottom of the box will sitting on the abutment, not the top of that. So I need to add, uh, create additional node down there and then uh, apply the boundaries on that one. So to do that, we go to the node and element, select this node, node number one, the same thing for the other end, node number 15, and then we say that uh, translate those um, nodes for us. So using the translate and going downward in the Z direction of negative three meter and apply. So I see they are connected. Now the same thing we have to do and then connect them, um, connect the top and bottom nodes uh, with the rigid links because this node is actually on the air. There is no connection between this node and the entire the structure. So but we have to somehow make this connection. So we go to the boundary, elastic link, and then rigid link. Two nodes will be from here to here. The same thing for other end. from here to here. Okay, so the model is almost done. Uh, I mean the geometry is done. As you see, whatever we model, you will see show up under the tree menu. So the geometry is done, material property are done. And I'm seeing an additional note here, which is not uh, what we wanted. Uh, let me see where that one came from. So simply I can just delete that. Okay, so it should be okay. Now what we have to do, um, we have to assign the uh, um, supports. So let's see how the supports are defined. Uh, for these two ends, uh, what I do, I just, uh, let's go to the boundaries and then define support. For this end and that end, I assign a support that um, is constrained in the uh, x, y direction and also in the z direction. So they cannot go up and down, they cannot go side, uh, uh, I mean, in the sides. So we can select these two nodes and apply. This one applied, and for this point, I have applied the completely fixed support. So I selected all uh, rotational and translational degrees of freedom. I just fix them all and apply. For whom are not familiar with Midas Civil, uh, for the supports, Midas provide a uh, hexagonal with the six segments, and each segment shows one of the degrees of freedom. The, uh, the three degree uh, the segments in the right side are related to the uh, translation of degrees of freedom. Uh, if you go clockwise, it will be dx, dy, and dz. And on the three segments on the left side, 
uh, are for rotational degrees of freedom, which start from Rx, Ry, and Rz. So by uh, looking at them, you can simply understand that uh, which locations are, uh, which directions are constrained. So here, uh, DZ and uh, uh, R's, DZ and DY are um, fixed. Okay. Supports are uh, done completely. Now, uh, what uh, what else we have to define is uh, defining the uh, time-dependent material properties because, um, as we discussed, as we discussed, one of the importance of uh, using uh, Midas Civil is that uh, you can uh, do the construction stage analysis and also time-dependent analysis. Uh, so, for defining the time-dependent material property, we can go to the properties and uh, then we define the compressive strength at and we call it compressive strength. Um, let's call it C6000 to be consistent with the um, concrete that we selected. So again, you can uh, select user defined or code. Uh, you can select any of the codes available here. Normally, we're selecting a CBFIP, but you can also go with the ACI. And uh, then for entering the compressive strength of concrete, mean con compressive strength would be 49368 newton per square meter and um, click on the draw graph it shows you the uh, actual graph say OK close uh, the same thing we have to define for the uh, creep and shrinkage so for the creep and shrinkage there are two um, uh, there, there's one code CBFIP uh, in two years 19 two versions 1990 and 1978 which uh, both of them could be used, in, uh, could be modeled in Midas Civil, and for all the structure you can use that uh, 1978 uh, if you want to check the old designs. Anyway, today we are using a CBFIP 1990. Again, I call it C6000. Characteristic compressive strength will be smaller this will be a prime C actually um, is different from the mean strength value that uh, we entered for the other dialog box and then uh, relative humidity 70 percent and then notational size will be actually volume to surface area 0 0.3 uh, but you can you know update it later on so you can check the result this will be the creep coefficient uh, function and also you can check the uh, shrinkage strains. All right, and close and OK. All right, so these uh, material property, I mean time-dependent material property, um, are defined. And as you see, they are still in blue, so it means they are not assigned to any um, element or uh, material or anything yet. So what we have to do, we have to um, actually link these uh, time-dependent material property to the concrete that we define. How to do that? We can just use the, uh, we are still on the property and then the time dependent material. You can use the uh, material link. All right, so we select both of these. Uh, no, we select only the grade 6000 for the concrete. And for the creep shrinkage, we select 6000 and the same for the compressive strength and add. Okay, it's done. And as you see, it turned to black it means they are already assigned and change property um, as I said based on the code software can automatically defines that um, notational size for you because the important uh, is an important factor for calculating the creep and shrinkage losses so we definitely need it needed to be um, accurate so what we do, uh, we just uh, select the code, and based on the code, we said that, okay, just select the entire sections and apply. It automatically applies the uh, 
update the notational size. So you can just go there and check the notational size. As you see, the notational size is changed for uh, all the element. It's different from what we entered, and the software automatically calculates those. All right, let me close that. I hope I'm not uh, going too fast, and uh, you guys can uh, follow me. But all the material will be, sub, um, I mean, we'll be sending these material to you, so you can just uh, go ahead yourself, uh, watch the video, and, uh, you know, do this step-by-step -step modeling. Okay, so it's done. Uh, the next part is uh, defining the tandem property and tandem profiles. So let's go to the tandem property. We go to the load. Alright, we shall force this, press resting load and go to the load, press resting load and then tandem properties. Alright, add. Now I need to define the uh, tandem property. We define the material, uh, only the material for that, but uh, we need more than that one. So the tandem property, I call it uh, web. We are, uh, Midas still provides three uh, type of tendon, internal post-tensioning, um, uh, internal pretensioning, and uh, external. So now we have internal and then post-tensioning. That will be different because whatever you select here uh, that causes the, um, you know, calculation of different type of losses because as we discussed earlier, um, th there are different losses for pre-stressing and post-tensioning, so uh, you should consider this here. Material we selected as a tendon and then the total tendon area I select uh, the standard uh, type like one half inch and uh, I'm selecting 21 or let's select the uh, 31 31 uh, strands okay and this gives me um, such a uh, area, but if you know already the uh, total area of your tendon, you can simply enter them. It doesn't um, need to go through this and then, you know, check it from here. Um, duct diameter should be larger than this, then the um, software, uh, the, the tendon can go through, so I just enter 0 0.07, uh, which total area will be slightly larger than the total area of the tendons. And uh, for relaxation coefficient, uh, you remember we talked about the, um, the relaxation um, losses. So we can select the factors here. I select CBFIP and then 2% uh, relaxation coefficient. Ultimate strength automatically is uh, 1.8 times the um, 10 to the 6. We remain the same and uh, we just uh, keep them as they are. And please just uh, consider this part. Uh, the model could be bonded, it could be selected as a bonded and unbonded. If you select bonded, it means um, you're injecting the uh, gro gro grouts inside the uh, uh, ducts, and then the ducts are, I mean, the tendons are bonded. So they have different behavior, and uh, the section will not be, um, that area of the duct will not be deducted from the section property. But if you select it as a unbonded, so that will be a different behavior, and also you will not, uh, you will see that the software uh, deduct that area, that small area of the duct diameter uh, deducted from the section. So the section will be a slightly um, looser. Okay. This is defined. Now we need to define the tandem property. One of the um, advantages of Midas Civil is that it's very, very easy to define the tandem properties, uh, tandem profiles. So let's see how the tandem profiles are defined. Okay, we're going to the load and pre-stressing load tandem profile. Add. So it's a very simple, uh, straightforward uh, tandem profile dialog box. OK. 
Okay, excuse me, let me run this up. All right, so um, I just call it tendon on the left side. Group default, and then the property, we're selecting the tendon that we um, just defined. And the sections, that the elements that we're going to apply to, let me go to the this view and select entire the elements here. All right, all the uh, girders are selected, but the uh, the pier is not, and automatically is showing up here. I'm selecting the three D type and <coughs> spline. The user defined. Now we have to enter the x, y, and z uh, um, coordinate of uh, certain points on the this section. Uh, where the software can automatically, uh, you know, uh, the, the software can, uh, you know, place these tendon for, for us. So what I do, I have the tendon properties in Excel, so I can just copy paste it here, or you can just manually enter them. So let me enter these uh, values here, so X, Y, and Z, uh, and it will be, the profile will be created for you. But um, as I said, that's pretty easy. You can just enter them manually. This is 0, 2.9 and some. And OK. Let's see. OK. All right. I have to select the element that I want to apply the section 2 so I'm selecting the straight and uh, now it will be acceptable yes uh, you saw that it gave me an error message uh, where it wasn't able to apply this to the um, element so um, <coughs> that was the reason that it, I selected the reference light uh, uh, reference access wrong all right so let's first double check this section before we define the other one all right, so um, let me go to the front view. As you see, this is a uh, tendon profile, <clears throat> and definitely we uh, need to set the tendon profile based on the bending moment that uh, such a beam uh, may have. If I go to the front view, you see that uh, tendon is <clears throat> tendon is or, um, already inclined. And that's important because, uh, you know, sometimes um, you have the inclined webs and you definitely need to have the um, exactly correct um, geometry for the tendons and the tendons goes through the web, not some assumption that's going to be vertical. So in civil, you can simply uh, model that without any problem. All right, so we need to define exactly the same thing for the um, other side. So one for the left web one for the right so there are a couple of options we can follow see if you have one tendon you can simply uh, uh, copy that so by saying that uh, copy or move you can simply assign it to the certain element in a different location that's very very helpful uh, tool when you have many tendons and then you don't want to just go ahead and every single time enter the um, you know different uh, coordinate because it's gonna be very time taking so in this way you can simply select that and say assign it to the current element and uh, you know it automatically uh, take care of everything and uh, there is one option if you are not assigning to the certain uh, the same element and it will be auto adjust of tendon length which means if you have two girders uh, side by side but you have some skew and then length of one of the girders are uh, you know is shorter than the other one then uh, this tendon is not you know fit for that one so what happens if you use this copy option and then check this auto adjustment software automatically uh, shrink that uh, uh, tendon profile to make it fit exactly fit to the um, you know other tendon profile but what what I want to do I want to just click add and simply um, add the other part of the Girder. So 
So um, exactly the same thing. This time I am just changing the name uh, to the tendon in the right. Selecting the material web 3D um, straight and then X values right here. Everything is okay and uh, okay. I didn't select the um, elements, so let me select them. Yep, all elements are selected and say okay. All right, so now I have two tendon profiles defined on the two sides of the um, section, one on the left, one on the right. And uh, yeah, that's it. So now uh, the next part will be applying the load. So um, everything is uh, almost ready for running the analysis. We need a couple more steps and uh, we are completed the model. Okay, uh, so the first step will be defining the self-weight. For the self-weight, we can go to the load, click on the self-weight, and uh, so the load cases, we have to define these load cases. One of them is self-weight, type will be dead load and add. These are just the names, we are not giving any property to these yet, um, but we need to have them because when, anytime that uh, uh, we define the loads, we, we have to know which one are we are assigning. Pre-stress. Pre-stress and then type will be pre-stress. Or we can select them all as the construction stages because uh, whatever you select for the construction stages, you can see them um, in the construction stage and also um, you can um, forward them uh, after the construction and post-construction stages or you can just keep them in the construction stage and not see them their effects. Okay, another one. Dead load. And construction stages and also diaphragm. as a dead load. Alright, so close that. Uh, now we select the self-weight and then uh, we didn't define any group yet. We can define the group and then group uh, first one will be self-weight at pre-stress at SIDL at and diaphragm. So the reason that we are defining the um, load groups is that in the construction stages, the only thing uh, is important for us in the modeling is construction stages. So you have to, um, you are just activating and deactivating the construction stage uh, groups, as the groups that you define. Also, it's going to be a negative one, and uh, we say add, it's added. All right, uh, we have the beam load with the magnitude of negative 12. So <clears throat> we have the uh, beam load, uniform 0, negative 12, direction Z, and uh, we have to select the elements, which are these guys. All right, and will be this one, and then the load group SIDL, and apply. All right, uh, we have one point load. So I'm uh, what I'm trying to do, just showing you how you can apply um, different kind of uh, you know load on top of your your bridge. Uh, nodal load. This time for nodal load. Um, not all of these actually representing the uh, diaphragm force because we haven't defined any diaphragm there. 
So it's going to be in the FZ direction and negative 850 kilonewton. And the load will be diaphragm and then the group will be diaphragm. And uh, selecting the node will be this node in top and apply. All right, that one is also applied. So the load are defined. Uh, we have one more uh, load, and that's a pre-stressing load, which I have to um, define for it. So for the pre-stressing load, again, going to the load, pre-stressing load, and then tent and pre-stressing loads. Group will be PS. Uh, we select both tendons. So um, here's the thing. Here we defined only two uh, tendons, and uh, we have only two of them. And uh, in the construction stage, I'm going to activate them both at the same time. But uh, you have this, um, you know, freedom in my civil to having the, you know, stage post tensioning. I mean, uh, post tension different tendons in a different times, or you can do in the same tendons you can just post tension them in the different times. So um, just know that here I'm not going to do that. I just keep it simple just for sake of training. But you know that you have this uh, capability with my civil as well. So I select them both. And uh, I can go with the stress or force. I, I select the stress for both ends. Uh, in the post tensioning, it will be important if you are pulling them from one side, I mean, to put the jacking from one side or both sides, because if you go with the uh, one side, uh, probably the friction losses will be more, because the uh, total length of the bridge will be considered as a total length. But if you pull them from both sides, half, uh, half length of the bridge will be considered. So uh, probably you're going to have almost half of the, uh, that friction, or at least lesser. All right, so what will be the stress level this much for uh, both beginning and the end? And the grouting uh, happens instantaneous. Okay, so this one is also applied. Everything is done. Now we need to just define the construction stages. If you remember, uh, for the construction stages, Uh, we, ha we said that we uh, are going to define three construction stage. For construction stage, you can simply um, click on the, uh, I mean, this option would be here for the easy access to that. You can simply uh, click on this, and this dialog box opens for you. Or you can go uh, to the construction stages under the load, construction stages, and this option will be available for you. Define construction stages. Add. Oh, by the way, um, I have not for, uh, assigned the boundary um, loads and structure groups to the, um, you know, to my elements, to my structure. So first I have to do that, and then we can start the, uh, doing the constructions. Because if you remember, we said that um, the important things for construction stages are groups. So to define the groups, go to the group tab under the tree menu. Right click on the construct, uh, structure group and click new. So we have two of them. One is span, add, another one will be peer and abutment. Add. Okay. Uh, the same thing for the boundaries. We're going to have peer. And also, we can have abutment. OK. Uh, so how to define these? Let me go to the front view, side view, and select entirely girder. And then give the span to this. So you can just drag it and drop it here. It's already assigned. As you see, before that, it has 0 node and 0 element. Now had uh, 15 node and 14 elements. So for the um, pier and abutment, I have to select these guys. 
this node, this node, this node, and also the nodes above them. Because these will be, um, you know, activated uh, in the first stage. All right, so I just uh, drag it and drop it here. We have seven nodes and one element. So I go back for the boundaries. Okay, so going to the uh, elastic links, if I go to the table, I see that the group uh, has defined to these is default, but I want to assign it to the uh, abutment. The first one was in the under peer, but the other two were under the abutment. So you can simply select them from here and it's, and it's changed. All right. The same thing for the uh, boundary groups. All right, property. Yeah. All right. Uh, sorry, let me go to the table. Uh, under the table format, it will be um, easier. For the fixed support, which is uh, related to the peer, I assign it to the peer, and the other ones are abutment and abutment. Okay, this is also fixed. Now we can go back and uh, do the construction stages. Add and name construction stage one. In construction stage one, we have the, um, okay, we have three options to uh, work with. One is element, boundaries, and load. So for the element, I select the peer abutment. Uh, by the age of 30, this is the maturity of the concrete, actually. And add. And uh, duration of the duration is 30 days. Going to the boundary, under the boundary, we have to activate both of these guys, add, and under the load, we are just activating the self-weight. Just know that the self-weight always should be activated in the first step of the first stage, otherwise will not be considered. All right, apply, and the first construction stages is uh, defined. So I call it construction stage two, where uh, under the element, I'm a, uh, Yeah, construction stage two, if you go to the element, this time I need to activate the span uh, with age of 30, because in the first stage we activated the peer and abutment, now is the time to activate the, uh, uh, the, the box. And then boundary, we are not activating anything, but for the load, uh, we activate the pre-stressing and also the diaphragm force. So diaphragm and then the pre-stressing will be activated uh, in the stage two. All right, the duration is also uh, can decrease that to five days. Apply. And finally, we have stage three, uh, which takes ten thousand days. That's uh, what code asks us to uh, check the. Uh, creep and shrinkage and all the losses and deformation and all those at, um, also at the uh, 10,000 days. So this is why we need that. So going to the element and boundary all are uh, assigned. Only in the load we have one uh, distributed load which we are applying it here. All right. Everything is set. Uh, okay. And now we have three construction stages. If I close that and uh, stay here and click on this to fix the view for you and also display so what happens is that on construction stage one we have only the pier and the abutment 
construction stage two, we have the pier, but in construction stage three, uh, we have distributed load, uh, which if I activate that, you can see them. Anyway, now the, now the uh, analysis is ready to be performed for the construction stage analysis. Um, just let me do one more action and define the moving load for you to see how easy it is to define moving load and uh, we are also using that moving load for the post-construction stage analysis and also for calculating the, um, you know, the load combinations. How to do that? Uh, we go to the load and then select the moving load. Uh, the first step for defining the moving load is uh, selecting the uh, standard that we want. Uh, today we're going with the Ashto LRFD, but as you see, all the uh, other codes are also here. You can just uh, use them, uh, especially for North America, uh, Canada, and Ashto LRFD are uh, mostly used. So I select Ashto LRFD. I'm sorry, we have to be on the base stage to the software let us do any changes. Ashto LRFD. And when you're selecting that, all the other options uh, show up for us. We have traffic line lane. First, let's define this traffic line. All right. So um, I call it lane one. Eccentricity uh, will be three meter because we are we modeled as a spine model so I have to place the uh, one traffic lane here one traffic lane on the other side alright and then I'm selecting two nodes so uh, here we have a spine model so we go with the lane element but if you have like a grill edge model then you can select the cross beam so that's a different story which I don't want to talk about it now it gets you confused because you don't have the model here so for the moving direction we select both and then for selecting two nodes one node here one node there, and then the um, clicking apply. The first uh, traffic lane is created. I call the traffic line lane two. Uh, everything the same, but the eccentricity will be negative three, so it goes to the other side of the uh, center line. I just delete these and select the node again from here to there and apply. All right. So we have two. Uh, traffic lanes defined. Just uh, showing you one more thing. If you have any SKU in the beginning or at the end, so you can simply enter them here. They don't need to be exactly the same. They could um, be different. But here we did not have any SKU. It's a straight bridge. All right. It's uh, ready to run the analysis. We can just hit run and. So I got some warning. Probably I didn't provide some uh, something correctly. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just defined the traffic line lanes, but I didn't assign the um, assign them to the structure. Let's first define those. First, define the vehicles. Vehicles, I'm just selecting the standard vehicle as per H2LRFT. Um, so um, first the truck with a 33% allowance and OK. Another one will be uh, tandem with 33% and OK and close. So these are um, defined. Now I have to assign it to the structure. To do that, I have to go with the moving load cases. At we call it moving load case one. All right, there are a couple of the you know possibilities and the ways that you can define these moving loads, moving load combinations. If you wanna see um, you know run both uh, both these uh, trucks, I mean trucks and tendon uh, on your structure and find out which one uh, causes the maximum um, you know bending moment or deformation or anything which is required for, I mean, critical for your design. You can uh, just put them all in uh, one 
uh, under one group and then uh, under one loading case and then just run the analysis. So the software gives you the maximum bending moment on, uh, of a combination of those. So it doesn't matter uh, which one was that. But if you want to see the single effect, I mean, see the effect of tendon on your structure, see the effect of um, truck on your structure separately and study those so you have to put them on a different um, loading combination. But I uh, want to just get the maximum results. So what I do, I just say that add truck, minimum number of lane will be 1, maximum number of lane will be 2, and I select both lanes and OK, and also add, this time I select tandem, 1 and 2, and select both lanes and OK. So now we have two trucks are uh, running on the structure, so what the way that we define that means one time the software will run it on the one side on only one line and it uh, loads only one lane and another time uh, loads both lanes in two directions and then finds the uh, worst case scenario and if I select combine which means uh, for example on one lane we have the uh, tandem running another one is truck so they can get the uh, worst case scenario out of that one too. But I want to go with this independent because code asks us to do it independently. I don't need to go with the combine uh, in this case. Okay, moving load case is defined as well. And uh, we can also consider for that uh, lane support negative moment that the Ashto asked for us so that whenever we have continuous beam or um, girder, we have to consider the, I mean, apply the uh, two trucks uh, with the 90% of their weight in both sides of this um, negative su um, the support middle support to cause the maximum negative moment here. So what software does automatically does it for us. So you don't need to be worried about that, and uh, you know uh, create such a uh, you know loading static load for that. Software automatically considers that one by selecting the uh, group which is span and add it and OK it will be automatically considered. Okay. So uh, now we can uh, just run the analysis. Let me uh, just open up another model that I have and uh, on that model everything is identical. Uh, we have just uh, uh, we've got the result analysis and then we can just go with the uh, you know design and then show you some of the output results. Okay, I open that. Um, so, if you want, we can have like five minutes uh, break because it's been um, one half hour, like continuously talking, and probably you get tired. So uh, we could have five minute break and then um, start from that point where um, you know show you the result and then show you how to set up the design. Uh, options for the HTL RFD. All right, so now it's 4:35 here, so we start at um, 4:40. Thank you.
All right, uh, we'll continue the session. All right, uh, we run the analysis and uh, we got the result. Now let's have a quick look at the some results and then after that I uh, will um, start setting, setting up the PSC design for you guys. So for seeing the, uh, watching the results, you can go to the result tab and the options uh, will show up here for you. You have the reactions, deformation, forces, stresses and so on. Uh, let's just uh, check some <clears throat> beam force diagrams. For example, let's check the uh, bending moments. Based on the stage that you are selecting, um, let's say stage one, two, three, or uh, going to the post-construction stages, different load cases or load combinations will be showing up for you. When we are on the post-construction, uh, you see uh, the envelope results are here because <clears throat> we have the moving load and the moving load result will be shown as, as a envelope result which means showing you the minimum and the maximum um, for example bending moment for the certain element but if you go to the construction stage one you see the um, dead load, erection load, tendon primary, secondary, creep primary and secondary and shrinkage primary and secondary will show up uh, those are the result that you need for uh, your design. Okay, so starting from the construction stage one, if you get the bending moment, there is no bending moment um, at this time because we haven't activated the girder yet. But if you go to construction stage one, you will see that uh, start uh, it's showing you. You could have the legend apply and see the uh, range of the data, uh, range of the bending moment. This is based on the summation. But uh, let's say you want to. Um, check what's the effect of dead load on the structure. So select the dead load and uh, you can get the result. Or you can see what is the effect of tendon primary. This will be the moment, bending moment, that the tendon primary, tendon, um, pre-stressing tendon would cause. And uh, also you can see the secondary effect. Uh, secondary effect are uh, required by code um, that you know you have to use the secondary effect for uh, strength uh, limit state and also primary for the uh, uh, service serviceability limit states because what the primary does probably um, just you know causes a cracks in the top um, you know in these locations probably and then the secondary effect comes from the um, when you have uh, you know uh, indeterminate structure then the secondary effects show up as a um, additional loads which uh, you know have the additional effect on the structure so we have to consider those all right uh, let's check some uh, post construction stage result as well uh, post construction stage results you can check them based on the uh, static load that you applied moving load that you applied and then um, you know the results of the construction stage which uh, are converted to post-construction uh, and also you can see the load combinations uh, which you create so for creating the load combination we can just click on this option you see under the result on the left side you have load combination tab and if you go to the concrete design you can click on the auto generate this is what uh, I showed you earlier on one of the slides You can select the code. Now we are selecting H2LRFD, and uh, you can select the uh, moving uh, the load combination that you want, uh, both for the static load cases or, or, or uh, construction stages, or the, both of them. Selecting those, then you can set up more options here. Uh, you can change these uh, factors or you can for the uh, creep shrinkage you can select these uh, air stir charge and say OK and the load will be created for you but I don't want to double create those because we, I already defined these on this model but I want to just show you how they are defined as you see these three of these guys are for strength limit state and the rest of them are for service limit state and uh, if you go to the uh, strength limited state for first load combination, you see that the moving load uh, is considered with 
this factor, dead low temper, uh, tendon primary, um, you know, shrinkage and creep primaries. While for the um, service limit state, we can see the different uh, um, load factors are considered. If you want to consider um, any other load combination, you can simply enter them manually. You can just add a load combination. You can select it for, uh, you know, strength limit or, or service, service. And then you can simply select it from the uh, loads that you have or from the um, load combination that you selected. So you first you define the load combination one. Now you can select it as a one load combination and give the factor to that. Plus you can add another uh, load case to that if if required. Okay. So what I'm seeing here uh, under the uh, post construction stage is that uh, you see that all the uh, load combinations are showing up here, and I can get the result based on those. So this is the bending moment. You can check the uh, shear forces. And now, the same thing with the deformations. You can check the deformations in the different stages. Seeing the deformed shape. Construction is stage one, two, three, maximum, and then post construction stages. All right. There are many more uh, results you can get. For example, uh, if you want to check the tendon losses, you can simply get those results. Oh, sorry. You can go to the result table, tendons, tendon coordinate, uh, elongation, arrangement, and tendon loss. So if I go to the tendon loss, as you see, the losses are uh, separated for me, relaxation, creep, and shrinkage. And uh, now we can select the different stages, let's say construction stage three, and then you can select the different tendons and apply. So um, they will be they will showing you different um, different options. And this is the uh, stresses, and also you can get the forces as well. All right. And all these uh, losses that you can see, you can it will be in a uh, tabular format. You can copy paste them into Excel or you can export them into Excel. And there are uh, many more options output that you can get from here. So software, uh, my just will provide you three types of uh, output. One is graphical output, as you see here. One is a tabular format form that uh, you saw you saw them there. For example, here also in the bending moment, if I wanna um, see the tabular format, I can click on that option and give me the uh, result of the tabular results. Oh, I didn't select any load combination. Okay, so this will be in a tabular format which you can simply sort them and arrange them in any way that you want or you can just simply uh, export it to Excel or for example if you want to uh, sort it based on the uh, maximum bending moment, bending moment in Y direction click on the sorting and select all these, bring them back and then select the bending moment in the Y direction, bring it to the right side and then sort you see that it will be uh, sorted based on the, uh, I mean, the descending order. All right, so that's a way to play it around with this. But if you wanted to have it in Excel, you can simply copy paste them there or export it. Another form a form that software provides is uh, um, actually give you the animation. So whenever you have the um, uh, type of loads that um, you know uh, is time dependent, like a uh, response spectrum forces or um, you know time history also the construction stages you can get the uh, get those animations created for you all right let's uh, talk about the design and how to set up the um, design if you go to the PSD tab so let me close this and uh, being on the initial stage 
if you go to the PSC tab, um, you see that uh, this design option for the PSC shows up, and uh, you can first option is to uh, select the code. Now I want to select the, all, all the designs, and then you know um, the moving load. Everything was based on the Ashtoyla FT, so here also I select the Ashtoyla FT 2012. Now we have to define the parameters. So if you remember uh, during the Uh, during the uh, showing you those those slides, I was telling you that what my the civil does and what are the interpretation of each one. So let's um, take a look at them again. So here uh, in this dialog box, we have tendon type, which is low relaxation or stress relief or uh, press stressing bar. By selecting any any of these, you get the different um, factors um, based on the code. So that's important to know what uh, you're really um, using for your design and then uh, for your uh, construction and then you have to use that one because uh, when the software uh, starts checking the result for you it just gives you the you know applies those um, factors based on the selection of the tendon type then we have exposure factor for the crack width that um, is also important to be like a class 1 or class 2 based on that one also the crack with the equation, uh, the crack width will be affected. This equation uh, will show up when you, um, you know, there's an equation for that, and these coefficients will be show up on those um, those equations, and then having a different effects if you select either one. Also, for the uh, corrosive condition, we have severe or mild. We talked about the flexural strength that we based on the code or strength compatibility. We, here we select code and then segmental or non-segmental selecting um, you know this construction type will affect the uh, you know calculation of crack moment um, shear and torsional resistance and also the um, you know tensile strength limit of the concrete so that's important what you're selecting this part will be output that you want from the software you can select them uh, one by one let's say for example if you want to check only these three you can select them or if you want them all you can just select it so these loads these box in the left side are uh, based on those six of six factors that we, we talked about for service limit states right and these are the three options that we talked about uh, based on the uh, ultimate limit states so we want to uh, we want the software to calculate all these, check all these, and uh, provide provide us the uh, you know design check. So okay, next step would be material. The material remain the same if you want to, unless you want to change them. And uh, a design output. So when you when we talk about the design. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to, I mean, the software automatically designs the entire the structure. Uh, it could be selective, so you can select the position of the design that you want. For example, you want two elements here uh, to be designed. So you can simply select those, select these two, or these three, or these four, and then say apply, it will be selected. And if you click on this option, it shows you that which elements are um, did you already select. Okay. The same thing for the output. So we can select the same um, elements and apply. And also you can check that um, you know moment of strength will be calculated both for the both ends or um, you know only one end that you want. The, the same for the shear and torsion. And uh, later on will be uh, concrete allowable strength. So this is also uh, important uh, because uh, what happens code actually requires us to um, check the uh, service limit state for compressive uh, strength also for the uh, tensile stress. So what happens in a uh, service limit, limit state 1 uh, it would be checked for the compressive stress and for the limit state 3 would be tensile stress. So uh, this is how we can uh, separate these. For uh, these are the load combinations created for service limit state. 
So we said that, okay, these two will go uh, up there. We can also select, check them here. In the results. Oh, sorry. Yeah, limited state one, serviceability, and limited state three. So the load combination B9 will go to the bottom one, and then um, C, uh, CB7 goes to the top one. But you can just add the um, other ones as um, as well. Okay, and okay. All right. One more thing in the uh, pre-stressing or post-tensioning is uh, defining the uh, re rebars. So for defining the rebars, we have to go to structure and then we have PSC bridge. Go to the PSC bridge, then we can define the uh, spans which already defined. So now we have span 1, the left side, span 2, and the right side. And then based on these spans, we can provide the reinforcement. So defining the reinforcement is pretty simple and straightforward. So I already defined the reinforcement here, but I show you how it's done. So we can select this span here. Say okay for span one, I want um, eleven uh, number number eleven uh, rebar, eleven of them, and then the spacing will be one. You can change the spacing. The software automatically change uh, check this spacing as well. And then you can place them. As you see, these show up as a dots here, but you can change the Z direction and it's gonna go up and down. So you can define both for the top, bottom, and the sides, wherever you is required. I just defined one row for the um, top flange. All right. So this is for span one. The same thing for span two. I used uh, all the same thing, just uh, for sake of um, this training. All right, so going back to the PSC, everything is done. Now we can just perform the design. I'm waiting for the um, software to complete. So all right, it's completed. Because it just uh, gave me this message. All right. Um, there are two ways to check the uh, results, result of the design check, I mean. So one is the uh, table format. You can come to the result table and, for example, check the stresses for cross-section at the construction stage. All right, we select this. OK. And these are the uh, results. So whatever result is uh, showing in the black and having a check OK means they are safe. But whatever is not, uh, it means that it's not good. So, uh, for example, element five for the at construction stage two is not good for the tension because the uh, you know it's uh, allowing the, it's uh, passing the limit of the tension limit. So whatever is not good, um, it means that it has to be considered for the uh, better design. Um, and we can also from the uh, ultimate limited state we can check the flexural strength. Uh, we can select the elements, let's say, with all of them. And the same thing here. So if it's positive or negative, uh, it shows here. And then it compare the um, M ultimate uh, with the phi M M N that we talked about. This will be the strength of that section, which are calculated based on the code equations. All right, so this is one approach. And uh, another approach will be uh, getting the Excel report. So for that reason, I have to select this, putting on SI. And in this way, software actually provides us uh, a very detailed uh, analysis of a very detailed analysis of how the um, you know those checks are done. Um, it takes a little bit of time because um, what happens is software is giving a uh, the strength checks, all the, you know, one by one checks for the all the elements that we selected. If you remember, we selected these um, elements down here, and all the uh, flexural strength, shear, and torsion will be um, checked there, and also the crack checks. So uh, it's going to be a pretty uh, big model file, big file, Excel file, but um, 
um, before because of that it takes a little bit of time. Uh, let me see if I have that. All right. So I stop this here and open up this. Open up this uh, Excel. So um, oh. okay, it seems that I don't have it for uh, this is not the right one because uh, each time that it starts creating that is overriding, so it was it's overrided my uh, old file. So I don't have it, but uh, this will be the general form. So um, uh, excuse me for having all the data and uh, values as zero, but they are not. They shouldn't be zero, and they are not really zero. But uh, this file is just overrided, and uh, I just stopped that. That's the reason you see them as zero. But this is a format. Like uh, you see all the sectional properties, material properties, uh, pre-stressing information, and uh, as you see because we selected based on the code, uh, this is the um, approach that the software is uh, following. And you see all the, uh, you know, depth of neutral axis and <clears throat> dimension of that uh, compressive strength block and all will be shown here. And then every single steps for, um, you know, flexural assistant calculation, all of them are um, writing here, uh, written here. So that makes it so easy for you to compare it with your, I mean, if you have a very simple structure, definitely you can use your uh, spreadsheet. So that will be a very easy way to comp compare it with your spreadsheet. And also you can use this as your, um, you know, for your report. And uh, as you see, it's, uh, you know, it's referring to the different um, um, equations or the part of the code. And you can just simply uh, go ahead and compare it with the um, code, code codes. All right. So uh, we have crack checks for the top and bottom. All the equations are here. But unfortunately, we are still all as zero. Uh, Um, then the uh, second part will be shear design and also the torsional design. Or right, I have some values here for shear. All right, so um, this will be the uh, the thing. So every every time it just uh, checks for every single element that is okay or is not good, and uh, if it's not good, the values are are um, are all provided, so you can follow those. Also, this is the result for the uh, torsion. So that's the uh, way that the software provides you those um, um, results. So for the design check, uh, <coughs> you saw that we can check them uh, in a table separately, one by one, uh, or we can just get a complete, um, you know, hand like a format of hand calculation, and everything is listed there for you. You can check every single part, and uh, you know. We'll check also the result. Yeah, that's um, all for today. Uh, I hope you learned how to um, set up the model for, I mean, the post tension box girders, and how to uh, apply the moving load, how to apply the <clears throat> tendon um, profile, how to get the tendon losses, and <clears throat> uh, how to set up the design. So the uh, design part of I mean, PSD design is exactly based on the code and it's pretty simple to follow um, and, you know, set up every single part of that. If you have any um, questions, um, uh, I think my colleague has answered uh, many of the questions uh, asked, but if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. And we can uh, discuss more about the, um, you know, um, those options available on Midas Civil. Thank you so much for your attendance, and um, I hope you guys enjoyed this session. Have a good evening.